Hello, we welcome all of you in the wonderful name of Jesus. What a joy having all of you as you come, as we come together to learn God's word. We are so privileged and blessed and um, excited to have Reverend Fitroy Joseph from the United States of America. Uh, he is a very dear friend. We have known each other over the years. For the last many years, we have um, ministered together, served God together. He's originally from Trinidad and Tobago, a beautiful island in the Caribbean. But right now, he lives with his family in New Jersey, United States of America. So we will continue our studies about the book of James. We cover chapter one and chapter two. And today we are going to look into chapter number three. I'm very excited. And at the end of the teaching, Pastor Joseph is going to pray for you. So let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we come before you. We worship and adore you. You are a wonderful God. It is wonderful to serve you. It is wonderful to know you. The greatest thing in all of our life is to know you, to love you, and to serve you. We want to know you more and more. We want to love you more and more. And we want to serve you more and more. Lord, we pray for our dear brother, Reverend Joseph, as he teaches us your word, let your anointing be upon him, Lord, and touch all of us, Lord, as we learn from your word. Let something tremendous happen in our lives as we meditate on your word. Let your name be glorified. Touch our lives, Lord, and in return, we want to touch many lives for you, for your glory, for your honor. In your precious name we pray. Amen. So with great joy, it is honor for me to bring to you Reverend Fitroy Joseph. So I will be out of the scene. So Pastor, whenever you like, I will share the PowerPoint screen. But if you want to do it without, Please feel free. Now it's all yours. Praise the Lord, everybody. <clears throat> Amen. We are here. We are glad to be here with you today. And we are about to continue the, the topic in the book of James, which are many, there are many topics, but I just want to say a little bit say something about the book of James. Uh, and also the, the writer of the book. James was the oldest half-brother of the Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew chapter 13 and verse 55. He witnessed Christ's appearance following his resurrection, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 7, and was among those who assembled together following his ascension, according to Acts 1, 14, to await the coming of the Holy Spirit later. Later, James became the leader of the believers in Jerusalem, according to Acts chapter 12 and verse 17. Galatians 1, 18 and 19. Even Paul, the Apostle Paul, took his advice on how to deal with new, the new gentle converts according to Acts 21, verses 18 to 26. James kept the potentially explosive solution concerning evangelism the Gentiles' people in Jerusalem. In addition to that, he helped 
draft a very tolerant letter to the Gentile Christians in Antioch, according to their stats. James was cognizant of Paul's ministry to the Gentiles, but concentrated on his own efforts winning his Jesus brothers to Jesus Christ. We look at the phrase, uh, the tribes which are scattered abroad, according to James 1.1. 1, 1. That phrase is a symbolic reference to the Jews in general. The, the phrase scattered abroad denotes those Jews who were living outside of Palestine due in great part to the intense persecution of Christians living in Jerusalem, according to Acts 8.1. The letter was written in Greek, and uh, we know why, because uh, it's logical that, uh, and we assume that, that these Jews had been scattered far enough to have ended far in populated places, chiefly populated by the Greek speaking people. The major theme of the book, James appealed to the believers that it is necessary to put our actions with our inward faith or else that kind of faith will be nothing. It will accomplish nothing. So in chapter one, we see the prayer of faith. We also see the doer of the word. Chapter two, we see the respect of, for others. We also see faith without works is dead. Now, let's get into the text of James chapter three. And it reads, you can follow me as we continue reading, it says, my brothers, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that ye shall receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he's a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouth that they may obey us and we turn them, the whole body, wherever you may want it to go. It's like a ship. Looks like a ship. <laughs> Although so a uh, large, those large boats are driven with fierce winds. They are turned by a very little or small rudder, wherever the pilot or the master desires. And he went on on to, to talk about the tongue. How, when it's not bridled properly, when it's not in control, you can get in a lot of problems, you will find yourself in situations and after you feel ashamed of what you have said. Let's look at the tongue. You said, the tongue is a, that's a natural part of the tongue, okay? natural part of the human being. The tongue is a muscular organ located in the mouth. It plays several crucial roles. For example, for instance, chewing and swallowing. The tongue moves with food around the mouth, aid in chewing and swallowing. It helps us articulate sounds and form words clearly. The tongue keeps the airways open, allowing us to breathe properly. The tongue runs from the, the, the hyoid bone in the middle of the neck to, to the floor of the mouth. Thousands of taste, of taste buds cover its surface, allowing us to perceive different flavors. And the Bible went on to talk a lot about tongues. 
Now that's the natural tongue. The natural tongue is very, very important. And if we are not controlled by the inner resources of the Holy Spirit, our tongue could put us in a lot of trouble. Verse 1 says, the word master mean literally teachers. Problems exist in the early days of the church because of the false teaching. And if ever there's a time in this world in our lives that we're experiencing false teachings, false teachers, it's now. 95% of the things you are hearing concerning these new teachings are false. And we know their sources. It seemed it was popular to be a teacher and unqualified self fail to recognize that those endowed by the Spirit with a teaching ministry, that they were gifted. And yes, they were gifted, just like today. But we've got to be very careful if you are not fully grounded in the word, our teaching may cause distraction. It may cause people to go off in a wrong direction. And it may cause people not to even believe God again. I had a friend. We used to work together as young people, got us saved. Very brilliant, too brilliant. Went to Bible college, went to university, came to America, went to medical school, and she's super bright. And I haven't heard from her in about 30 years. And out of the blue, she found my number, and she called me, and she said, you still believe in the Bible stuff? I said, yeah. And she went on and on with all those false teachings. You see, the tongue, if it's not controlled by the Holy Spirit, it can lead you into terrible situations and places. The tongue. The tongue. David says in one of the Psalms, put a door before my lips. Put a door before my lips. to keep the words that I may say and that it's not proper out of my mouth. So it's important to know that we as our believers, we must speak what God says and what our minds tell us. The scripture summarizes the false teachers or the false, false teaching can come both from within and without. In this case, James wrote to unqualified teachers as my brothers. Wow. The writer here identifies himself as a teacher and indicated that teachers will have to give an account of their ministry in the near future. All believers will appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And there will be degrees of judgments. More will be required of those who have received much. Teachers will be evaluated on a stricter basis because they have had greater opportunity to receive and understand truth. Truth is important. James here shifted attention from teachers only and included all believers. James pointed out that without any exception, everyone 
offense or thumbers will be required to abstain themselves and even carry error to repent. This is a strong statement indicating the believers offend others and other people. Listen, someone said many years ago, and it's a lie, <laughs> it says, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words cannot. That's a lie from the deepest part of hell. Words are the most powerful thing in the world today. Words. Do you know we were created by words? Everything you can touch, see, smell was created by words. Do you know you are a word person? Do you know you were created by the word of God? In the Bible, Genesis 1 says, and God said, 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 and even up to today, it's still the same way. It hasn't changed. Words are powerful. The most powerful part of the human body is the, is the tongue. People are in jail today. People are dead today. People are on the streets struggling because of words that people spoke over their life. Someone could be arrested and someone could be paid to go to the court and lie and say, I saw him do that and, and it's not true. And he'll go to jail. One word from the judge, guilty, and you're gone. Words. We gotta watch what we speak. We gotta control our tongue. So Jill went on to say, and I quote, the tongue <laughs> is full of evil. Is that is that a person who does not cause stumbling? My wrong use of his tongue is a perfect man. I want to repeat that. If you do not speak words that are ungodly, you are considered a perfect man. This does not mean absolute perfection. Rather, it means he is a believer of spiritual and moral Maturity. John, John went on to say that such a person is able to bridle his whole body. He is using the illustration of the way a rider is able to control a horse. You've been to races. You see people ride horses with bridles. And that little bridle on the face of the horse controls the horse by the, by the rider. He went on to say, a ship in the sea, though driven with fierce winds, are controlled by a little rudder. Imagine that. He says the tongue is a small member but full of evil. Jail for us illustrate the, the relationship of the activity of the tongue to the activity of the entire body. With the rudder of a ship. A slight pressure on the rudder of the ship controls its course. Imagine that. Your tongue. Do you know you are what you are today? You are who you are today because of your tongue. Let me give you a simple illustration. 
the woman you married, do you know it's because of your tongue? You said, hey, baby, I love you. I want to get married. And that's it. Your tongue. The job you hold today, are you holding? Because of your tongue. The place that you're living right now, you're living there because of your tongue. The spoken word is a powerful word. So we got to control our tongue. And one of the ways to control your tongue is to surrender your total being to the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's why Paul says, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought of Robert to be equal with God, but made himself of no repetition. He humbled himself when, when he realized who he was, and he be, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. And what is it? At the name of Jesus. When you speak his name, demons tremble. When you speak his name, sickness has to give up its control, excuse me. When you speak of them, sickness has to give up its control. He may not kill your enemies, but when you speak, he will set up a, a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Your word is power. The Bible says the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. You cannot do anything without your tongue being involved. Proverbs 18, 2 says, death and life are in what? Where? The power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. The tongue is a powerful part of your body. And the Bible, the writer illustrates it by a horse, a big ship in the sea. Just imagine that huge ship in the sea is controlled by a little rudder. And this 250 pounds human being, if it's not controlled, if his tongue is not under control, it will be chaos. Your tongue can put you, if it's not controlled, in a very terrible situation. There are those who might claim it is impossible to control the tongue. James Redford them back to the creation record where God indicated the four categories of creation over which man was to have dominion. The word here translates tamed, T-A-M-E-D, might more accurately be Translated, subdued. Subdued. Your tongue must be subdued by the Holy Spirit. You cannot control your tongue except the Holy Ghost comes in when you surrender and, and allows him to take over by reading the word, by studying the word, by obeying the word. Obedience the key issue where controlling your tongue is concerned. Many animals raging in 
treatment. Many animals in such shape and size, they could be as uh, fierce as ever, can be controlled by their tongue and your tongue. Do you know when you speak the word, things happen? I'm afraid of dogs. <laughs> but one day I was going in an area, a dog was, and that was crazy. I said, I rebuked that tongue of yours and I commanded to be quiet. And immediately, the dog became quiet. I was confronted by a bully. One night I was driving, and the guy cornered me and came out with his fist in the air over my face. And all I said, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. And the guy froze, literally froze by my car. The tongue, the tongue. Use your tongue properly in the right way. You can control and be in charge of any situation when your tongue is controlled by the Holy Ghost. Just like how a little rudder straightens the ship. That little bridle will control the horse. You've got to put your tongue under control. But you cannot do it except you surrender your total man to the power of the Holy Ghost. James called the tongue full of deadly poison. In describing the activities of his enemies, David wrote, adders, poison is under their lips. <laughs> That's James 140 and verse 3. The untamed tongue refers speaking evil rather than good. Psalm 52. It refers destroying rather than helping. Psalm 64, 2. It seeks to destroy reputation and moral through slandering gossip. Not moral, but morale through slanderous gossip. Gossiping is terrible. It comes from the tongue. In the previous verse, James dealt with the nature of an evil tongue. The tongue, however, is capable of speaking both evil and good. It says, can a system pro produce sweet water and bitter at the same time? No. But the tongue, however, is capable of speaking both evil and good. Wow. In the book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 34 to 37, the writer dealt with the inconsistency of the tongue. First, blessing and then cursing. Imagine that. The tongue can bless, the tongue can curse. And that is dangerous. How can you be praying for someone and at the same time you are gossiping and calling and saying things against them? We're going to wake up, church. The Bible says, when Jesus comes, every man shall give an account. Every human being shall give an account of the things that he does. Do you know? You can only, most of the time, maybe 90% of the time, times, you can only do something when you talk it out, 
words are important. Words are important. The reason cursing man is evil is that he was made after who? The similitudes of God. That is in his likeness. Genesis 1, 26 and 27. The likeness of God in man The likeness of God in the human being is consisting of intelligence, emotions, and will. We call it the image of God. Also moral, tendency towards God, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Through accomplished or efforts being accomplished, you as an individual, you have to come to the place of realizing that you are not your own. You were bought to the price. Therefore, you must glorify God in your body and your spirit, which is God's. You're not yourself. You don't own yourself. To curse man is to curse the likeness of God. Others have pointed out that the tongue is capable of both good and evil. Yes, both good and evil expressions. However, the writer points out that it is unnatural for both good and evil to come from believers. As James emphasized, these things ought not to be. James was not writing to unsaved people, but to, it, it states it, the epistle, brethren, brothers. So that means he was talking to the people in the church. Do you know how many churches have been destroyed because of gossip? People leaving the church and they're going outside, going in media, and they're yeah, saying things about the preachers. Bad things. You read, read, read the media, read, check the multimedia and see the, the wickedness they're saying about the pastors. And it's not true. Where that, where that came from? From the devil himself. You see, there are leaders today, world leaders. But and they are full of the lying spirits that are around. They don't speak the truth at all. And as they speak the a lie often and over and over, it, it to other people becomes the truth. People are being paid to go, go on multimedia and lie about people. There are some leaders, they tell you, this is the way it goes. I'll do this. But it's the other way, the opposite. Those, those spirits are not to be in the church. Are not to be in the church. As I said before, James was writing to unsafe, was not writing to unsafe people, but to, to brothers, to believers. Mixture of good and evil speaking can be expressed from natural man, but it is totally out of place for the believer. It should not 
happen. A natural man, yes, a sinner. That's his life, but the believer, there must be a straight path. James said in James chapter 1, give me a minute, I'll get it for you, James chapter 1. Yes, James chapter 1. Give me a minute there. Verse uh, 26, I think it says here. If any among you thinks he is religious or righteous, whatever you want to put it, and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's language is useless, or this one's religion is useless. If you cannot bridle your tongue in the sight of God, you are useless because it's impossible for a fountain to produce sweet water and bitter water at the same time. Jesus says, let your yea be yea, and let your nay be nay. You cannot mix it. Unfortunately, we are living in an age where some people are smarter than God. They are telling the Bible is not true. But I think it's James, or I think it's him. Uh, Proverbs says, let God be true. And let every man be a liar. Because the Bible says it. John chapter 14, Jesus says, I am the way. Without me, there is no going. I am the truth. Without me, there is no knowing. <laughs> And I am the life. Without me, there's no living. You cannot know God apart from the truth, which is Jesus Christ. The only way you can know the truth is to know Jesus Christ, obey him. And when, when you know the truth, the truth will make you free. Speak the truth always. The Bible says, all liars will be going to hell. That's what the book says. I didn't say it. I'm only quoted from the book. Speak the truth always. And if your tongue is unbridled, ask God to give you the ability to begin as from now to speak words of comfort words of wisdom, words that can build and not to destroy, words that can release people. Do you know, if you use your tongue to speak proper words concerning the person you are saying bad things about, if you change your speech and begin to talk good things about that person and pray for them and and uh, encourage them, they will change because all words have power. So, in closing, I want to encourage you to begin as from today to ask God to, con to control your tongue. Because the teachers that James are addressing, they were not speaking the truth concerning the gospel. This was the sin of hypocrisy I mentioned in Matthew 6. Jesus demonstrated the true spirit of the teacher when he said, I am meek and lowly in heart. 
the godly teacher will not be selfishly ambitious and arrogant, but mild and gentle. Mild and gentle. You will be envious because envying here translates zealous no, zealous. But zealous in the wrong way. <laughs> Hallelujah. This Eve is also listed as a work of the flesh in Galatians chapter 20. Because envying brings strife and strife brings division. And it's always better to say something good about somebody and not evil. I'm talking about the church, not the outside. We are dealing with the church. Always practice to speak the right thing and proper things concerning your brother because you were created in the image of God and likeness of God. And when you judge your brother, God says that's not good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm glad that I was able to minister to you today. Let's look at the last verse of the text. It says here, the fruit of righteousness is a sown in peace. Why did he say the fruit of righteousness? James showed that the product of earthly wisdom is confusion and every evil work. The natural man cannot speak godly wisdom. It's obvious. But the man of God, the one that belongs to the church, should practice speaking godly wisdom. They also endure the divine power or divine wisdom. Yeah. Peaceable. Verse 17 says that righteousness is the crop which is then reaped. For the verse said again, last verse, verse 18, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace. The fruit of righteousness is sown in peace. The fruit, so when you speak words, they are seeds. They can produce, but make sure your words produce righteous seed, righteous fruit, so you can reap the fruit of righteousness. In Jesus' name, God bless you. I hope Amen. this is a blessing to you all today. I ask Amen. God to touch you by his power. And if anything I have said that was not proper, I ask the Lord to remove it. But I pray you have, you have gained a little from this teaching. And you, as you apply it to your life, it will give you a place among those that are sanctified. So ask the Lord to touch your tongue, touch your spirit, touch your mind, mm -hmm. and let him renew you, you the spirit of your mind. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. Oh, let him renew you. 
Paul said in Romans chapter 12, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present yourself, your bodies are living, that include your tongue, sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is a reason of the service. And be not be transformed, not be conformed, sorry, but be trans re transformed and renew of your mind that you may know. Holy Spirit can do it for you. He can do it for you. Just, just like how you brush your teeth, the Holy Spirit is able to brush your tongue and keep it clean. So as you open your mouth, and when you're renewed by the spirit of your mind, from the brain to the mind, to your tongue, you can speak words of comfort, words of deliverance, oh. words of healing, and words of peace. God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you. If you have any need, Esther would like to pray for you. God has used his servant uh, with the healing ministry and with the deliverance ministry. And if you have any need, please share or just lay your hand and um, God knows your need. We just bring to the Lord and we believe a miracle in your life. This word has challenged all of us because it's a challenging for all of us how we use our tongue. And that's why David prayed in Psalm 19, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Words of wisdom. Words of edification. Words that glorify God. But it all starts, what is in our heart? Because what is in our heart will come out straight with our words. If there is anger in our heart, we will speak angry words. If there is love in our heart, we will speak loving words. If there is God's word in our heart, we will speak the word of God. What is in our heart? Let's examine our heart. Bring our heart to the Lord. And we say, Lord, do the surgery of my heart. If there is something wrong in my heart, because this powerful verse I was meditating and I read it in the Amplified Version. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it and yeah. indulge it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their words. They will bear the consequences of their words. Every word we speak, we will bear the consequences. As pastor has given us the teaching so clearly, it is a serious matter. Let there be a new start in our lives. Where our words have not been pleasing to God, we say, Lord, please forgive me. I ask forgiveness. I want to use my tongue in a right way to glorify your name. Pastor, would you kindly pray for different needs? God knows. And let's bring everything to the Lord. 
And we pray that they would feel God's presence right now, wherever they are. In Jesus' name. Go ahead, um, Pastor Joe. Yeah. You see, everything comes from the heart. When the heart is right, it comes through the mouth and every part of the body. Mm. The Bible says, keep your heart with all diligence. Keep your heart with all deliverance for out of it are the issues of life. So, Father, today I bring all those that have are within the reach of my voice. I'm asking you to touch each one. Yes, Lord. Wherever they are, whoever they are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By our Holy Spirit. Those who are struggling with gossip and slander. I come against that spirit because mm. it is a spirit. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we command it to be removed from that person's heart. We command it to be removed right now. Bring conviction. Uh -huh. Thank you, Jesus. That personal or persons could come to the place and surrender and say, Lord, forgive me. Mm. Wash me in your blood. Mm. Give me the strength to stand for righteousness. And having done all, stand perfectly mm. for you. Thank you, Jesus. Those who are sick, you told us, to pray Hallelujah. and to, not to pray but to heal the sick yes lord we command healing to that body or bodies right now wherever it's hallelujah sick. hallelujah hallelujah you are there and you are sick with your hand uh, right on your glory stomach. glory glory hallelujah and as i speak the word of healing you, you will be healed not tomorrow or next but right now right now Yes. I curse that thing and I command it to leave you alone. I release you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 There's someone in our midst right now. The enemy is troubling you with thoughts in your mind. Negative thoughts. Negative thoughts. You are you, you um, subtle spirits. I gag you by the word of God mm. and I ask you, God, to send your battering rams to batter those demons from their thoughts and to render them powerless by the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. What a powerful teaching. What a powerful time of prayer. Hallelujah. Yes. Pastor, do you have any assignment for our students? Oh, I, I forgot about that. <laughs> okay. I give them assignment. Okay. Uh, please write the summary of this lesson. Okay. There are two topics here. Mm. Taming the tongue means controlling our tongue. And then two kinds of wisdom. So please write down, read the entire chapter. Write the summary of the teaching of a lesson today. And then write an outline of this chapter. Memorize a Bible verse from this chapter. Then read next two chapter, chapter four and chapter five, before you come uh, for the lesson next time. All right. Do you understand what I said? Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Dear brothers and sisters, we love you very much. 
Thank, Thank you. you. Have a wonderful week. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. And Amen. see you next week. Pastor Fitro Joseph, Reverend Fitro Joseph will be yes. teaching us again uh, yes. chapter number four and chapter number five. So God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Thank you, Pastor, for your wonderful yes. teaching. We love you. Yes. Okay. I hope it was a blessing to you all. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank God you bless. So much. Bye bye. Bye bye.